Hey, sweet mama. Welcome back to another episode of Mom in Process. I'm your host and creator, Amy Cothran. As always, thank you so much for joining me today. I know how valuable your time is and the fact that you have chosen to spend a little bit of your valuable time with me as a way to improve your life and to join a community of like-minded women. I can't thank you enough for that. And I just wanted to say welcome. And I'm just giving you such a big virtual audio hug today and just letting you know that you're amazing. You're doing such amazing work as a full-time mother. And I'm so proud of you. And I'm so proud of you for taking some time to yourself today. Even if you're listening to this while you're making lunch, I'm sure you're multitasking and doing something while you're listening to me. So thank you for taking that time and welcome, welcome, welcome. So what I want to talk about today is actually on the lines of taking time for yourself. And I don't know if you guys follow my Instagram stories or not, but a while back I posted that I am reading Winning by Tim Grover, which I've talked about before. Some of the books that I read are you know, very masculine based books there. A lot of them are based around entrepreneurialism and winning and success and all of this stuff. And, and I love to take these books. I love to take these books on mindset and entrepreneurialism and, and personal development, all these things. And I love to apply them to life as a stay at home mom. And we've talked about that in the past and in that if you can take your role as a full-time mother and approach it as a career, as a job, it's really powerful and it really enables you to add value to that role. And so I was reading this book and there's a section in this book and it, it talks about the fact that winning is selfish. And so, you know, I was reading, I was reading through this and he talks a lot about Michael Jordan and Kobe Bryant because he was their coach. He, he was, he was their coach and he, he really pushed them. And, and, and that's incredible. I mean, he was a coach to the greats, you know, some of the greatest men, the most successful men, the greatest athletes that we've ever known. And, and so Tim Grover in, in and of himself is incredible. And, but when I listen to this, I'm like, yeah, you know, it starts to make you feel as a stay at home mom, like you're not doing enough or you aren't enough or whatever. And I kept going back to, you know what, this is still one of the most challenging things that you will ever do. I would love to take Michael Jordan's mindset on winning and growth and his drive and Kobe Bryant's mindset on winning and growth and drive and apply that to being a full-time mother, because I don't know. I mean, it would be an interesting challenge to see if Michael Jordan could handle it as uh that's quite a picture, right? To handle it as a full-time parent. That would be such an incredible, like I'm just giggling about it right now because it would be such an, a, a funny thing to see because that's not his role, right? That's not, but that's not what he chose. But if he took that, if he took what was in his mind and he can, it can be applied to anything. And that's the the point of the book is, is that you can apply this mindset and these qualities that you learn, right? These are learned behaviors and, and apply them to your own life in anything that you're trying to accomplish or anything you're trying to win at, you will be successful. So I know a lot of people would think, well, that's a kind of an interesting book to read as a full-time mother, because it is really kind of designed for more masculine based audience or more entrepreneurial type spirit. But I, I really love to take these and apply them to my role and, uh, and approach my role as a career. And how do I win as a stay at home mom? How do I be competitive as a stay at home mom? And I'm not saying I'm competing with other mothers by any means, because I, that's, that is not the mindset. It is how do I live a fulfilled life and compete in life? How do I compete in life and be the best me that I can possibly be? So I love taking this and applying it to my role. So one of the chapters in here was all about the fact that winning is selfish. And, you know, we teach our kids and we talk to our kids about how being selfish is a bad thing, or you shouldn't be selfish, or you need to share or whatever. But what if... 
what if that's wrong? What if there is another way? What if there's another mindset around this? It's not natural for children to want to share at a young age, but it is natural for them to want to win. It is natural for them to want to get their way, okay? And and what if we applied this to our role? And I'm not saying not to, you know, I'm not saying to teach your kids to not be selfish or, or anything like that, or to teach your kids to be selfish. Like I'm not, I'm not saying that there is a, a beautiful aspect of sharing, but in motherhood, we are treated as such. The mindset is such that we need to dissolve our identities to become a mother. We dissolve our identities to give 100% of ourselves to our families, especially, especially as a full-time mom. Working moms are amazing, but one of your pieces of identity is your career and your job and your role within that job. But as a stay-at-home mom, as a full-time mother, our role, our identity is motherhood. And that really should only be one piece of our identity. Our identity is so much more than motherhood. So what if, what if we started applying winning as a stay-at-home mom in a selfish way? What if the key to winning as a stay-at-home mom is being a little bit selfish? And I know that that sounds a little daunting and a little scary and it it's completely contradicting to the sacrifices we give um, as mothers, right? But we've shifted the terminology in past episodes from sacrifice to an investment, right? We're investing ourselves and our time into raising the future generation. But what if we don't have to sacrifice in order to do that? And what if being selfish actually makes us better mothers and raises better children? What if us taking care of ourselves and shifting that that terminology and understanding, yeah, it's okay if I'm a little bit selfish. It's okay if I take care of myself right now. What if that was normalized? What if we brought that back and empowered each other to embrace this idea? Well, I could guarantee you we'd all be a hell of a lot happier. I think we'd be a hell of a lot fulfilled. And I think we would be doing a hell of a lot better of a job in raising our children because you, you squash the resentment, right? You not maybe completely, I'm not naive, but maybe you squash most of the resentment. What if you bring back joy that way? What if selfishness is actually acceptable? What if that is okay? One of the things I want you to remember in this conversation is that I'm not encouraging you to give up your roles and your responsibilities as a mother or as a wife, okay? This doesn't mean we dissolve ourselves of our responsibilities as a full-time mom. But what this does is it shifts priorities within our lives to take time for ourselves, okay? This is going back to self-care. This is going back to pursuing things that we are interested in and which is also part of self-care. Okay, so we want to invest our, in ourselves in order to win within motherhood. Investing in yourself. That means reading. That means, you know, reading nonfiction books, not just reading, but reading things that grow your mind, doing things that help your body, putting food in your body that makes you feel good. All of those things to invest in yourself, taking time for yourself, taking you know, moments away and allowing your husband to stay with the kids, having somebody stay with your children, or if that's not available to you, carving out, creating pockets of time for yourself, making moments that it's okay to be selfish, locking the bathroom door. Okay. Some people might think that's selfish. If, if you want to call that selfish, then by all means, go be selfish, take time for yourself. But that doesn't mean that you dissolve your responsibilities and, you know, don't pursue your responsibilities as a mother. Okay. I don't want you to, 
I don't want to say slack off because that kind of sounds crappy, but I don't want you to feel like you have to step away from that role. But there are moments that I feel very strongly in the fact that we are overdoing it. We're overgiving. We're spreading ourselves too thin and it's causing a lot of problems. So it's okay for you to invest in yourself. It's okay to be a little bit selfish. One of the things that I want to talk about are the four foundational elements that we have discussed in January. And all of these episodes can be applied to one of the four elements. So what in this element or what in this podcast, what element from this podcast can you apply this to? I don't know. I can't, I can't make that decision for you. Can you, is there something that you need to do in your life to put things first in home health, wealth, or love? You have to decide if you have a, if you have something that you would like to pursue, if you have something that you would like to change, if you have something that you would like to improve in one of those four elements, it takes acts of selfishness. It does. If you want to accomplish something and if you want to win in one of those four foundational elements, whatever that project is, whatever that item is, whatever that task is, whatever that goal is within those one of those four foundational elements, or maybe it's all of them, it's going to take you being selfish in order to win. It is going to take you prioritizing yourself, that time or the time that you're spending on it in order for you to win. And that means saying no. That means saying no to other people that are pulling you in other directions outside of your household. That means saying no to some of the other responsibilities that you have decided, not anybody else, you have decided are a priority in your life. You are the one that is in charge of your home management, and it's up to you to decide what you need to say no to, because you are the one that has put the pressure on yourself to be a certain way and to do a certain thing. Okay. You are the one that puts the pressure on yourself to have your house looking a certain way. You are the one that puts the pressure on yourself to have meals cooked a certain way. Nobody else is doing that for you. Society has, yes, there's so much out there that is putting pressure on you or insinuating that you need to be a certain way, but it's You are the one that has made the decision that you're going to fall into that, I'll say trap. Okay. So now what are you going to say no to? What are you going to prioritize in order to win at whatever goal or whatever thing that you have decided you want to accomplish within one of those four elements? Okay. It's going to take you being selfish. There's no other way. There's no other way to accomplish them. You know, we go back to creating healthy lifestyles. It's going to take you being selfish and saying, no, we are not having that for dinner. We are having a chicken salad with a healthy dressing for dinner. And if your kids don't want to eat it, I'm sorry, tough love here. That's, that's too bad for them. They might go to bed to, they might go to bed a little bit hungry one night. And then the next morning, they're going to eat whatever it is that you put in front of them because they're hungry. They will be fine. They will absolutely be fine. If you no longer want to have chicken nuggets in your house, because that is not creating a healthy environment for you, then don't do it. You don't have to do the things all the time for your family to please your family. All this is doing is creating martyrdom. It's creating resentment. It's causing bitterness and it's not sustainable. You cannot continue down that path forever and not feel resentful. You know, I, I have seen this before where women talk about just sacrificing themselves for the season that they're in. And this is motherhood. And I think that's freaking bullshit. I think that is such a toxic way of approaching your role as a mother. And it serves nobody because then nothing gets accomplished, nothing gets done, and nobody's genuinely happy. That might be on the surface, right? That's what that's the face that that woman is presenting to you. But what's going on behind the scenes, either within the four walls of the household or within her mind, is not what she's projecting outward, okay? That's not what she's that's not what's actually going on. It is a not, it is not a sustainable way of living your life. You need to be selfish if you want to win. And what are we talking about when we're saying winning outside of these four foundational elements? We're talking about winning at life. We're talking about winning at living a fulfilled life as a stay at home mom. And it takes being selfish. It takes time and energy for you to invest in yourself. 
in order to accomplish that goal, which is living a fulfilled life as a stay at home mom, you want to feel good within that role. You want to be good within that role. But how do you do that when you are giving entire, your entire being to your family? It doesn't teach your children anything, by the way, it's teaching them nothing. And genuinely, if you took a step back and you said, would I want my daughters to do that? Would I want my sons to do that for their family? Would I want my beautiful, energetic daughters? I mean, I just think of the spirit and the energy that my daughters have and their personalities and their drive, you know, they're all unique and individual. And, and of course I, I have daughters, so I'm speaking from the perspective of daughters, but would I want that to be completely stifled because they have dissolved their identity in motherhood? Absolutely not. I would want them to embrace those aspects of themselves to still fulfill those moments within themselves and raise their families and raise their children. And I think it's possible. I know it's possible, but it takes acts of selfishness. It takes moments of selfishness and saying no to certain things, saying yes to certain things, saying no to your children. You can totally say no to your children in order to do something for yourself on occasion. Seriously, it's okay. They're going to be fine. It's going to teach them some really beautiful, amazing things. This idea of dissolving our identities in motherhood needs to be changed. It needs to be shifted and it needs to be normalized that we are still individuals. We are still human beings who have individual passions and things that we want to pursue and moments when we're not okay. And moments when we need to be selfish and say, I, I need to take care of myself right now so that I can then take care of my family. I need to invest in myself right now so I can take care of my family. That needs to be normalized. And if you need permission from me, then by all means, here is, here is my permission. I give you permission to go forth and do those things because I just, I think that makes such a beautiful woman. I think that makes such a beautiful human being who can fulfill the needs of motherhood and also fulfill the needs of herself. Wouldn't you want that for yourself to fulfill the needs of your home, to fulfill the needs of motherhood, but also find the balance in fulfilling the needs for yourself. So please understand that winning at life, winning in activities, winning in anything is selfish. And that is just the reality. And I know that that is a huge shift in mindset for people. And if you have any questions about it, and if you want to dive into this topic of winning, if you want to dive into this topic of success, you know, fulfilling your life and what it takes, then I, I really encourage you to get this book by Tim Grover. I think it's incredible. I do think that it is absolutely something that can be applied to motherhood. And, you know, it's not, it's not a workbook. It's not anything you have to work through. It's just what he, what Tim Grover has realized after decades of his work, what it takes to have massive success. And I do think that there is a place for books like this and conversations like this in motherhood and being a full-time mom. It doesn't always have to be applied to a career or to a job that's paid outside of the house. There are certain things in our lives, even as mothers that we want to win at, and that's okay. I want you to have that fight. I want you to have that competition and that drive and that eagerness to, to succeed and push forward and move forward all the time. Now, don't get overwhelmed with this idea that we have to change who we are, okay? We talk about this all the time in the podcast in that it's also okay to live a simple life. And I know that there is a way to live a simple life, but also win, but also be happy and also find fulfillment. I'm not saying you have to grow a seven figure business. That's not what this is about at all. This is taking something and applying it to a very realistic, very heartfelt role and responsibility as a full-time mom. So I, I do think that there is a place for these types of books within our roles. So go ahead and go ahead and check it out. I'll put a link to it in the show notes below. If you're interested in checking it out, if you're a basketball fan, which I am not so much NBA, but it's just fun to know and understand. I, I mean, I played basketball for years and years and years and years. So obviously I know Kobe Bryant and Michael Jordan. I mean, who doesn't know those incredible humans? So it is a very entertaining, very quick and easy read. And it's really, if you're looking for some 
for some motivation. This is absolutely that motivation to take that first step forward in something. But please remember that investing in yourself is going to be selfish. It, it does take time and that's okay. It is okay to approach it in a selfish way and still fulfill the needs of your family and yourself. So thank you so much for listening today, sweet mama. I look forward to talking to you all again very soon. Mm-hmm.